Hello and welcome! Merry Christmas to you guys! It's coming... Christmas coming soon! I've got an idea for you. What would be the most nerdy gift you could give to someone else? Well, you can make an application for them and we'll be going over this in this tutorial. Tasker also allow you to create standalone applications so you can now share your creations without having other people to install Tasker and learn everything about it. We're going to be creating a heavily customized weather system that will tell you the weather currently outside the window with a few extra hints. Also, I don't want you guys to sit over the 30 minute video, so I split this one into two, so you can uh, watch it in two parts. As usual, we're going to start with uh, making a new project in your tasker, so go ahead, do that, name it wherever you want, and we're going to create a scene. As we want our app to be customized, this scene will be asking for the person's name. Feel free to spend as much time as you want creating it really really nice, however I'm gonna keep a very simple look. On the welcome screen we'll ask for someone's name and this message will be displayed only once. For this purpose we're going to use a text edit field. I'm changing a few values to make the scene more visible to you guys. Text edit is where someone will enter their names and we're going to pass this name to our variable. Once the text in this field has been modified, there is a new variable, local variable, new val, which could be used to assign this new value to any variable we want. We're going to assign it to name1. We don't want this value to be directly assigned to our variable name, as this value will change each time you press a new letter. Once this is completed, we're going to create a button and just assign a simple OK function to it. We want this button to close our scene when our name is set. So if our name is set, we want to close the scene. However, if the name is not set yet, we want to wait and wait until the name is entered. I will also enter a short flash reminder to make sure no one will skip this part as we're going to use this name to customize our app. Here I'm making sure that the name is passed to our main variable name only when we finish entering a text in the text box from earlier. And, one, and once the name is set, we want to simply destroy the scene. This screen will appear only once on the initial start of the application. The entered value will be saved and stored for further users. We have our scene, time to create a task. We're going to start with a new task and name it wherever you want. I'm gonna call it mine, weather bug. The first thing I want to check for is if the name has been set before. If not, obviously I want to display our welcome screen and ask for the name. If the name has been stored previously, I want this to skip this step and go to actual tasks. So if variable name isn't set, I'm going to create and display the scene, ask for the name and wait until the name is set, then destroy the scene and continue with the task list. It's good to add wait until task as we want to keep the scene open until entering the name is completed. This setup will assure the scene is only displayed once. 
When creating an application using Tasker, you have to avoid using plugins. So we're going to look up the weather APIs to get the weather information. Here's a simple API that can use our current location to give us weather information. It will use our latitude and longitude to check our location and then receive the data from the server. So we can use our made fireballs to pass that location each time we are checking for the weather. We're going also store the outcome of the weather check in a file, just a simple text file will do. Let's call it weather takes the and store it on our drive. I found this option more reliable than passing the information directly to variable. The system variable responsible for location, we have to use it in the new variable as we're going to split into the parts and then submit it to our link when we are getting weather information. Default location values come separated by comma and we're going to use that comma as a splitter in our variable. This will create two element array, location one and location two, consisting latitude and longitude. I'm going to set those values to our local variables that we created before. So that way we can simply pass it over when requesting for weather information. Once this is completed, I'm just going to quickly run our tasks and see if there is any problems or mistakes. As expected, I'm being asked to provide my name, so I'm just going to enter Matt and continue with the task. There is a first error, this message should not be appearing on the screen right now, and we have the variables to work with now. Our weather information should be stored in a folder tasker in a file that we design it to store this data. I'm going to quickly fix the problem with a flashing message asking me for the name. All I have to do is just to go to our button and add one more condition to the flash that we want this to be displayed only when the name is not set. Now once this is fixed, we have to decide what our application will say. And for the sake of this example, I'm just going to type a few things. So I'm going to say hello and then enter the name of the person that we had from the welcoming screen. And I'll describe, it is a temperature in degrees in a specific place that we're pulling the location from. I will use temp type variable to describe the temperature and also I will advise based on the that what kind of clothes we should be wearing today. As a last information I will notify about condition in weather type. To make things more interesting I also will tell the application to remind us about the umbrella whenever it's raining outside. To check if it's raining we could use multiple if conditions however we're going to use new feature which is regex conditions and this way we can check the value of the variable for the following conditions placing a star before the word will assure that, that the variable is check for values like heavy rain light rain or rain having another star after it it will also check for values that will start with rain. Forward slash in between the words is used as or condition. So in this case, we'll be checking whether the variable contains showers or thunderstorms or drizzle or rain. That's all for this part. So hopefully you know how to handle um, weather APIs in the second 
part of this tutorial we'll be focusing on how to make this information usable to us by splitting the variable in parts. As always, thank you for watching. Like it if you like the video. Let me know in the comments if you think something should be improved about it. And I'll see you in the next one.